Hello, I'm Freelander. Welcome to Game Tro. Today we are taking a look at the BTC price and my analysis on where it can go. I just want this feeling in this trailer encapsulates my feelings on the matter. Let's go. I'm asking you to retarget the orbit and let more of them slip the kill zone. That's insanity. There's nothing more I can do. Alright, that is a gameplay trailer, of course, from Halo 2, way back in the day, and uh, not, that, not that a spot Bitcoin ETF will be our saviors in the cryptoverse, but it might just be uh, rocket fuel to keep this uh, rally going. So, what uh, <laughs> I'm going to go through a lot today, and i Hope you're here for the ride. I need you to fasten your seatbelts because this is going to be epic. <laughs> All right, uh, little disclaimers. This is fine, not financial advice. I am not authorized to give such advice. This is my speculation and um, uh, educated guesses and informed um, decision-making processes. So uh, hopefully you find this entertaining and or educational. Hopefully both. All right, so uh, <laughs> let's see, um, I need to do this. Okay, so like I said, this is my research. Please, uh, I, I draw it from a lot of different sources. Um, take it for what you will and uh, fact check me in the comments below if I get something wrong. Thank you, that'll help me out immensely. All right, this is the Bitcoin chart. Beautiful looking, beautiful. All right, over here, I just want to point out on this ATS software, um, you see this little gray box here? See? Um, that is, like, exactly right on the dot where we got to in this rally right here. I just want to point out that this, uh, I, I just thought that was really cool to start it off with um, these boxes paint as they go. This is not me painting them, except for this big blue line um, that we'll get into later as I get into some caveats. Uh, I'll go through them now. So let's go through uh, just some bear case stuff before we get into the super bullish stuff. All right, so this is the monthly chart. I got a gray box here. It likes to touch gray boxes later. So this is my super ultra bear case for the near term or far in the future. So 28K, we might see again. We might not. I'm not sure if all the orders here are going to get a chance to be filled or if they're just out of luck. All right, uh, moving on to another caveat here is um, uh, we're also going through, by the way, gaming uh, tokens if we get to that point. Um, there are a few caveats that could uh, stunt our growth here. Uh, a tether DPEG would, or meltdown would, uh, or USDC. ETH, a problem with ETH. A uh, problem with Chainlink or a severe regulatory crackdown that goes after most crypto founders uh, in a mass style witch hunt. Uh, those are the major, major risks, uh, black swan events that might take us down to here, maybe lower, but uh, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the, well, uh, those are some of the, some of the risk factors, uh, maybe a mass market crash where 
just about everything sold off and then bought back, that'd be a pretty pretty flash crash, kind of like the pandemic. Uh, and then something that just might stunt our growth, not go quite as high as just OT OGs taking profits. Uh, I'm not sure they have enough oomph to keep us down based on what I'm about to say. So just keep those caveats in the back of your brain that, you know, there are risk factors, but uh, I do believe that we are, um, that uh, some big things are happening right now. Okay. Moving on to uh, the chart I was actually going to show you. Weekly, we are almost to some liquidity here. Whenever we uh, liquidate some capital there, in ca this case, this is short positions, people that uh, think the market's going to go lower, they might just change their minds at this point, in which case a uh, lot of positions will be moved around. But the question is, is that rocket fuel? Or is it just like, oh, we tricked these guys. We're going down. Okay, so that's just charting. That's how I see it. I think since we ch chewed right through these like it was nothing, um, just for a few weeks here. Uh, this is on the weekly, right? This is all the way back in tw early 2022. Um, uh, I think it's going to be rocket fuel, personally. Uh, I think... Sorry, it's... I think we're going up. So that's just a bit of a charting perspective. I'll get I'll give you a little bit more visuals on the chart as we go through some of this other stuff. All right, BTC market cap. If you didn't catch my last video on price, I went through a lot of the bullish stuff this year that's going happening this year for Bitcoin in particular and a little bit for crypto. But uh, I didn't go through market cap and my price predictions, so that is the focus of this video and what I think will happen based on some of the things I'm hearing. All right, and some of my own calculations. So Bitcoin market cap is currently at, uh, as the time of researching this, I researched this over the last few days, is uh, $863 billion with a B dollars, or $44 per coin. It's gone up since I did that research. Okay. Asset management market cap. So these are retirements, pensions, um, uh, brokerage accounts, uh, just just people that want somebody else managing their money. Is one hundred trillion with a T dollars. One hundred trillion dollars. Okay, or roughly one, uh, just over a hundred times the market cap of Bitcoin. Currently, okay. The word on the street is the smart allocation to Bitcoin. If this ETF is approved in two days, hopefully, uh, word on the street is um, three to six percent. That, that um, according to risk ratio, ri adjusted risk return, and those sorts of things, that's what I've heard is three to six percent. Now. Toning it way down from there. Let's say, let's say one percent is what um, a lot of people allocate. Some people allocate three percent. The crazy ones allocate six percent. Uh, and then there's me. I'm stock raving mad. I have all my, uh, all my long term money in crypto. Uh, at <laughs> one hundred percent. Anyway, um, but uh, so. Uh, assets under management. Let's just let's just cut it way down uh, because of um, people thinking it's risky. People being stubborn about uh, about digital assets being you know voodoo or whatever, um, or they already have some from other sources than the ETF or or their ma uh, or their uh, asset management accounts. So they don't really want to allocate quite as much because they have already bought it from other sources. Uh, and stuff going to other cryptos than Bitcoin. Okay, with all that, let's just let's just say a quarter of a percent of this one hundred trillion dollars goes to Bitcoin. Okay, the um, according to calculations I saw from 
um, James from Invest Answers, I think is his channel. Um, I see him on Ivan on Tech. I don't actually follow his channel. I probably should, but uh, uh, they, <laughs> for every dollar that is spent uh, going into crypto right now, it will have something like a hundred, a uh, hundred and ninety-two times the uh, the price uh, movement because of how few bitcoins there are. We'll get into that in a little bit. The few bitcoins, maybe I'll maybe I'll get into that now. So uh, the, 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 uh, I have a note that says uh, there are 22 million, with an M, millionaires, with an M, in the United States. Okay? That probably includes houses and other assets, but 22 million millionaires. Okay? Only about 15 million Bitcoin, you know, Satoshi's wallet, other lost coins, um... <laughs> being unaccessible, there only ever will be about 15 million Bitcoin accessible to buy if people have the volition to sell. That 15 million that could possibly change hands. <clears throat> One Bitcoin will very much be a meme of you are like, uh, you, 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 you own a, like more wealth than than millionaires, right? One Bitcoin will be a meme. Uh, BTC is the most successful. Okay, this is a hot take. <laughs> I'm going to offend you if you're a Bitcoin maxi, but that's okay. Um, hopefully, you'll uh, keep watching anyway. Bitcoin is the most successful meme coin in, exist in crypto. Okay. Uh, it, it is a meme coin. It uh, it's starting to have utility with um, ordinals and inscriptions. It has utility as a transfer, but meme coins can be used for transfer and store of value. It just has really good tokenomics. It's the first one. It's the biggest one. It is. It has the meme of being digital gold. Uh, so, it, it it is the king of meme coins. All right, but that that's a powerful thing because this meme is about to take the hearts and minds of the populace at large. Okay, <laughs> going back to the market cap, uh, and so if only uh, so of the one hundred trillion dollars that are of assets under management, if just a quarter of a percent flow into Bitcoin over the next uh, my time horizon is in the next two years. Okay, year and a half, two years. <laughs> At a hundred ninety-two to one ratio of price to dollar amount going in, we would have a market cap of forty-seven trillion dollars for Bitcoin. Okay, or two point six million dollars per coin. Okay. <laughs> do I think it's going to get there? No. Do I think it could get there? Yes. In the next two years. I, I don't think it's going to get there for, for a couple reasons. But So let's take this 192 times down a notch or two to, oh, 20% of it. So, um, so instead of 192, uh, it would be like, uh, sorry. 40 or something like that, 40 to 1. If we take it down to 40 to 1, uh, $9 trillion market cap, which happens to be close to gold's market cap. Buyer, take note. Um, make your own decisions, please. Uh, so, or $400,000 per coin. Okay, That is... Uh, that is my base case, honestly. Maybe a little higher. Uh, OG's taking profits. Um, will will decrease it some, and uh, uh. So if we have one percent allocation with full one hundred ninety two multiplier multiplier, that's a four million dollar market or uh, per coin. 
four million dollar per coin. Um, so I don't think it'll quite get there, but uh, my bear case uh, is two two hundred thousand dollars per coin. That's that's my bear case. Okay, uh, I mean ultra bear case, like I said, black swan. Um, but even in a black swan. I don't think you can hold Bitcoin down for very long, so it might delay it. But I don't think we're if we don't get that high this cycle, then I don't think we'll go all that low this cycle either. So maybe maybe that black swan will uh, maybe we'll get to all time highs just barely, and then that black swan will take us back down to twenty eight k. Um, possibility. All right. Uh, moving on. All right, we need to define a uh, bull market. Uh, typically, they last like 18 months in Bitcoin. Uh, this one might possibly last uh, uh, 36 months or something. Uh, not 36 months, sorry. Uh, 20 or uh, 30 months um, because... Uh, you know, another another eighteen months from now, uh, just because. Excuse me, big money is slow. We're playing a different game now. Um, you can look at you can look at a uh, hundred different analysts that you know have their projections and stuff, but the type of money that we're about to um, see unlock is just completely different. They don't trade like hedge funds. They don't trade. Uh, based on uh, based on price all that much, they more it, it's more store of value uh, people that this is unlocking. It's unlocking others. It's unlocking some traders and stuff. Um, it's unlocking some hedge funds, but uh, it's unlocking the long term money. That money is slow. Uh, that being said, there is a lot of money. Uh, I hear lined up to buy in the next few months. So um, my guess, we'll get back to this chart. Let's go out to a monthly just so that we get a more a little more clarity. That's a 30-minute chart. That will not do. I wanted a monthly. All right. Uh, it has the wrong label on there. Do, 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 do. All right. So here we are, last few years. Since 2017, this is my guess is when um, hedge funds really started paying attention and started buying and selling a trading list to make some money. All right. So, mm -hmm. uh, I meant to do this while I was doing the price predictions. All right. 200K right there. All right. That makes these candles look real small, doesn't it? Let's let's make them look a little like that. You can see that, okay? It's two hundred k, four hundred k. By twenty thirty, we are maybe, maybe. Let's see. Is that yeah? That's a million dollars per coin right there. That's two million dollars per Bitcoin. Scary numbers, scary numbers. Hopefully you're still with me. Like I said, it doesn't need to get up there, but that that is that is a possibility. That is in the cards. Um, not a very likely out outcome. I'd say four hundred k is more likely. But uh, that's a good, uh, that's almost a 10x from here. Um, from, you know, somewhere around here. We're, uh, we're not a 10x. That was a 6x. This was cut short for regulatory reasons. Um, yeah, so like I said, there's some headwinds that could throw this off, but that's my... That's my analysis on Bitcoin. Now, let's say, let's say a bear case, you know, 200, 200K. I mean, there's there's people that say 100K. There's people that say 80K, for goodness sake. But at 80K, like, 
yeah, we're probably going back down here and then up. And it'll take a little bit of time, but not probably not as long as this bear market. Who knows? Maybe. You know, it depends on your time horizon. But uh, with all this money flowing in over the next six months, I really do think we're going parabolic here. Yeah. About that time frame. Uh, right there. Maybe. Maybe. Crazy. Yeah. Anyway. Giving you a little bit of time to digest that as you realize how crazy I am. Okay. Uh, moving on from Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> we could get up there. We don't have to get up there. We could just go just barely all time highs and then back down to here or even here. You know, it's all it's all possible. But uh from what I hear, we going up. Okay. That is my base case. I'm gonna I'm gonna use two hundred just to not be just to not be too terribly crazy. Alright. Uh so other crypto yield. Okay, yield and payments are going to be huge. So there's $26 trillion or so sitting in banks so that swaps can happen between different currencies seamlessly. They need to keep that much liquidity in there so that um, problems don't arise. Uh, things like XRP are going to make that number much, much smaller. Um, hundred times the order of magnitude smaller so we'll need less than a trillion dollars in that uh system so that money can flow elsewhere where are they going to put that money who knows but some of it might find its way into crypto xrp is doing a lot of stuff if some of that funnels into xrp uh, xrp is going to be the catalyst for that so eyes will be on xrp from that community um, there are other cryptos involved in that. I'm not so much into that narrative, but um, but I do think it will happen. Okay. Uh, rapid fire here, hopefully, yield. Institutions are insanely obsessed with yield. Yield-bearing assets are what they want. That's why real estate does so well is because it's considered a yield-bearing asset because of renters. So that's why real estate has one of the biggest market caps in the world. I think it's to the tune of, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say a number because I haven't done all the research. But um, so ETH and other cryptos, Cardano, Solana, not so much Solana, actually, um, because the fees are so low. They're probably going to change that in the future. But what will the, that do to their uh, customer base when they do change the fees? I don't know. A lot of uncertainty on Solana. I I like some of the projects there. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say any more right now. But uh, Cardano uh, has good yield. Uh, if you want more Cardano, that is. Um, and right now the price is appreciating. But anyway, I think ETH will be definitely the front runner in the yield bearing asset thing there's there's triple uh, let's let's go to eth's chart while we're here it is underperformed the next uh etf is going to be uh, uh well is uh is probably going to be an eth etf so i i believe that's in the cards uh this doesn't this box doesn't scare me as much because we made it down to the bottom of the box and then we chopped through it rather than just leaving the top of the box. So it's just slightly different market structure. Um, it doesn't scare me quite as much, which might be um, it, because uh, uh, because the institutions are tra tracing the yields and the black swan doesn't quite hit this, or we don't get that down there in Bitcoin. All right. Hopefully you're still with me. I, uh, I appreciate your comments, even if you leave the video early. Um, getting down into the altcoins uh, timestamps are in the description below I should have said that at the beginning of the video I'll say that at the top of the thing anyway uh, description so ETH 
um, uh, I believe can have a si similar effect to Bitcoin, but it has a smaller market cap, so it might have further to run. But it also has more headwinds to it uh, as far as uh, regulatory uncertainty and those sorts of things. Um, it's not quite as battle tested. It's pretty battle tested, but it's not quite as battle tested. And uh, the developer people can find who the developers are and stuff. So it's a uh, it's a it, it's it's a pretty safe pretty safe thing. But institutions may or may not like it uh better than bitcoin uh it, it'll attract different institutions than not uh, institutions vary so so much in what they want and their risk profiles just like individuals do so um it's like the institutions are coming which ones uh some will be very very interested in eth um because of its yield bearing properties and the etf so it has three different layers uh that i know of of yield right now besides DeFi, it's got um it's got uh liquid staking uh so it's got staking you know you can stake your eth and then it's got liquid staking tokens then it's got uh eigen layer uh and then maybe one more layer out or a layer in between there anyway sorry um uh forgetting it right now but it, it there's lots you can do with yield on this and on DeFi, so that'll be a big narrative. Uh, I think money will swing towards ETH next. Okay, um, just a bunch of narratives here in crypto that I won't go in exhaustive on. NFTs on Bitcoin, mentioned it briefly earlier. Ordinals uh, making mining much more profitable, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, decentralized social media. Uh, that's going to be hard, especially if X survives, um, and maybe if Elon Musk can decentralize it a little bit, that might be a, that might be a good path for him. But we'll see how that shakes up. For now, it's a really good platform, in my opinion. DeFi. Oh, there's so much I could talk to talk to you about DeFi outside the scope of this video. AI. Uh, AI and crypto. Uh, there's some projects that can make use of AI, but uh, there, there's not as much correlation right now, but there, there definitely is space for correlation in the future. Let's go down, give you a different chart to look at. Okay. Mm. Daily chart to ETH. See, we're bouncing off this a little bit. Let's see how we do. People are probably pulling this out for Bitcoin, for the ETF. That's fine. Um, I do think it will be rocket fuel. Okay. Um, yield, of course, I mentioned privacy. Uh, people aren't always and uh, people and institutions aren't always going to want all of their transactions public knowledge. So privacy narratives will play a factor. Real world utility. Uh, world mobile, uh, no, not world mobile, well, kind of, I, I don't like it at all, mm. you can't have my eyeballs, anyway, uh, what's it called, um, is it world mobile, anyway, things like helium, uh, things like, uh, uh, it's in the gaming realm too, but step in, uh, uh, things that, uh, track inventories and stuff, uh, just real real utility drive uh decentralized uber um that that some blockchain features can help with help a business with uh it's not specific to ride sharing but uh i i think what they're doing is really cool and i think it's a good model and blockchain helps a little bit with it uh and real world assets um tokenization of real world assets and like uh, deeds to homes and um, stocks and other things, real world assets uh, being put on chain. Um, so those are some of the some of the narratives getting down into gaming. Okay, uh, I, I would have given a price prediction on ETH, but I haven't done those calculations yet. I'm not uh, particularly inclined to. If you want an ETH price prediction, do it in the comments below. <clears throat> just one more thing on the market cap of Bitcoin. Like, so much money is about to flow into crypto. 
Uh, there, the the one the main caveat I am worried about is the profit taking uh, from older uh, full, from from people that are following the four year cycles uh, and and just the the growth it's had so far. But um, uh, but I I do think two to four um, thousand uh, two to four hundred um, thousand is is obtainable per coin. Um okay, the main the main niche that I'm interested in is gaming and metaverse. The reason I am so bullish on I have many reasons I'm bullish on this. And uh should I do a separate video or should I continue? I'm going to continue. The show must go on. All right, I'm gonna give you give you some gaming to look at. Hopefully, here in a minute. There we go. Turn off the sound. Once it gets up. All right. The reason why I'm so bullish on crypto gaming, I do believe the two main reasons, and then I'll give you a few others. Uh, let's see. Sound is on. I don't want sound on. Go away. There we go. Okay. Uh, two main reasons. One is I do believe it's going to be a major financial vehicle in many ways. Uh, and two, because I believe it's going to eat traditional gaming for breakfast. I don't think traditional gaming can survive what's about to happen. <coughs> Okay, we got, so just just rapid fire on these. We got advertising. It'll Advertising will be able to be much, much, much more um, targeted via on-chain uh, spending and stuff and that sort of thing. You don't even need a soul-bound MFT. You just need a wallet address, what they like to spend money on, and you know, what NFTs they have, then you go, okay, they will be interested in my product, and they're linked to, oh, this this game or this game, so that game can market to them for you. Okay. Um, I like this game a lot. It is Army of Tactics. We will talk about it later. On-chain advertising. Real-world items, so uh, you... You win a game and you get real world items just shipped to you automatically. That will be a thing. Uh, trophies. <coughs> a lot more I could talk about on that, but we're moving on. Uh, AR, VR uh, for the metaverse, uh, 3D interfaces. So instead of keyboard and mouse, you can just have your AR glasses that are translucent, so you, you see uh, holograms in front of you, and you're interacting with these holograms, and moving um, moving your troops around the battlefield, or um, uh, shooting, or whatever else. There, there's there's so many more interfaces that can happen. This isn't specific to Web three, <clears throat> but. <coughs> It's one reason I'm bullish on gaming in general. Next generation Zoom has to do with networking and stuff. Uh, I do believe a lot of networking will ha actually happen within metaverse game world metaverses. Um, uh, real world worker happiness. This isn't anything I've heard about, but this is thought that came to mind that <coughs> in a certain set of scenarios... Workers may be in such a position, like the general population might be in such a position, depending on the country and the thing, that in order for a company to really get them to work for them, they either have to pay them crazy amounts of money, <coughs> or they have to... Excuse me, I'm a little bit under 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 the weather right now, but I really wanted to get this out before the ETF showed up, um, so that they would have to give them a pair of AR glasses and um, 
and make sure that they're happy with uh, uh, gamify their work so that their uh, their willingness to stay there is higher. New gaming genres. Um, there'll be games that could not exist without the blockchain. Certain certain economic setups, certain uh, use cases, certain things that the blockchain will enable that uh, game game types that you couldn't have before blockchain. Uh, just game fi in general being one of them. <clears throat> There's been gambling, but not game fi. Um, so that's a new genre, but there are others that I won't go into in this video. Okay. Um, generations. This generation grew up on gaming. They want to be in the metaverse. The best place to be in the metaverse will be where you can make real money. Um, this generation is very much... Um, these. I mean, for the past two generations, my generation and the generation before me, slightly before me, uh, a lot of us grew up on video games, and it's just gotten more intense as the generation has gone on. Okay, um, we'll go through market cap in a little bit. Uh, I just want to do some of the players involved in the game, some of the uh, people involved in this that will really help. Uh, guilds will be a major factor. There will be gaming guilds bigger than um, some large corporations today. Uh, gamers, okay, uh, obviously. Uh, gamers will want Web3. The quality of the game since free-to-play has actually gone down And in general. There are hits every once in a while, but they're all right. But um, I think I accidentally... Is this the one I accidentally won? I accidentally won one of these rounds, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll take it. Anyway, um, yeah, gamers will want Web3 games more than they'll want Web2 games. The quality of games of Web3 will be bigger because the devs will be more incentivized to make them better. There will be more, vastly more money in Web3 development game development than in web 2 development. There will also be uh, more variety of winners versus just the one or two hits that um, that go off that capture everybody's attention. There, I believe, will be more uh, numbers of winners. Investors, of course. Uh, gaming, uh, gaming will... Uh, investors of all kinds, collectors... Uh, just the they'll they'll be very very drawn to uh, Web three gaming, uh, and in that uh, there's going to be new sorts of financial vehicles. Uh, the connection with DeFi, uh, gamified DeFi, uh, DeFi within gaming, DeFi to help um, manage some of your in game assets. There will be a lot of connections between DeFi and gaming. Stores of value, as in collectibles and tokens, um, will both actually be seen as stores of value, which just will accrue more market cap. Networking, of course, opportunities will be, excuse me, massive. Okay. Coming up on total market cap of, uh, <laughs> of crypto gaming. Right now, according to Coin Market Cap, so it, it might be more or less depending on what what all they include in that. Uh, eighteen billion with a B. Okay, traditional gaming market cap of five hundred billion in the traditional stock market, excluding Microsoft and Tencent because they've got so many other things going on. Uh, Nintendo Elect. Electronic Arts and Roblox alone are over $100 billion. Sony is included in the $500 billion. Uh, they do a lot of gaming stuff, though, so I didn't include them. Uh, because uh, some, of these, some of these Web3 companies will double as hardware as well as software. And, um, and Sony d does do games itself, too. So $500 billion. So $18... <coughs> Billion versus five hundred billion, 
um, is uh, 20x, I believe. Uh, 25x, something like that. <coughs> 25x, uh, a little bit more. All right, Web3, uh, <laughs> why uh, Web3 is going to eat Web2 for breakfast? I'll give you the reasons. Games will be superior. Um, advertising will be more pleasant because it'll be peop things people want and because they can target the exact people who want would want those services, who can afford those services, and um, identify actual needs that, that the customer wants. Uh, and uh, hopefully with new marketing techniques, make it entertaining in and of itself. Dev revenue is going to be huge, so they can uh, do the quality of games. Investment vehicles, um, gamers will uh, gamers will be well-funded to actually play games, so uh, the the amount of challenge and uh, and notoriety will be a lot bigger, and gamers love notoriety. Let me tell you that. Okay. Um, game quality. Uh, the, the new experiences that are only possible with Web3 technology and value generation for gamers. Uh, that's a huge one. Um, so gamers will drift towards... Um, transferable assets and uh, games that actually um, have incentives uh, it's just it's just gonna happen okay um, there are 200 plus um, game uh, high quality games coming out according to Elio trades and um, those games I believe so if we if we take... Uh, 500 billion. I believe the average will be about two billion dollar market cap for their uh, governance tokens, uh, and then um, it, that range will probably be uh, infrastructure plays will be much more uh, than this. But this is this is games and gaming metaverses. I believe will be in the market cap range from 200 million to 20 billion. Maybe and a few hits reaching more than that. Uh, the the uh, sorry, where was I? Uh, things like IMX and Arbitrum and that, those sorts of infrastructure plays might go higher, but they're also already kind of expensive. So if you can get in early on those, that might be good. But um, a lot of the infrastructure plays were uh, were. Yeah, um, are, are, are large market caps, so they have maybe less multiples to go. In my opinion, moving on to um, uh, the reason why um, uh, I think I think most of these could get over two billion at one point or another is attention shifts a lot, especially among gamers and stuff. Attention shifts a lot in crypto in general, but you add games into it, it's going to shift a lot, okay? Um, better teams and games uh, will, of course, be higher on my, uh, on my, in my thinking. And this is predicated on, like, a, a $400,000 Bitcoin, by the way. And the exact calculations are too complex for me to do at this time. Uh, and, uh... I've, I've got a lot going on, so, and besides whether I'd be correct or not is, uh, is another matter, but this is just, this is just ballpark, and what I think would probably happen if, oh, and this is also predicated on just, just taking the traditional, like, 100% of the traditional Web2 gaming, uh, market, which I know won't happen, and some of them will transfer over to Web3, that sort of thing, but uh, there's also been a big like brain drain from Web two. Um, like the quality people in Web two have uh, mass are mass exiting to Web three development. So, um, uh, and then yeah, 
uh, when, yeah. So uh, that is pretty much uh, my overall. Where do I think Army of Fortune will get in this? Uh, this is Army of Tactics, one of Army of Fortune's games. Army of Fortune, the game, is coming out in uh, a few months, hopefully, in closed close beta. Uh, this is the Army of Tactics is getting a major update, hopefully, uh, this month, maybe next month, uh, depending on when AFG drops. Uh, AFG is the main token behind it, and that is the market cap we are going to talk about. I do believe... Uh, the ecosystem tokens can probably reach, on average, probably half of what, uh, just 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 roughly half of what the other one uh, uh, of what the governance token would reach. Um, just just as a safe rule of thumb. Note: uh, I will probably be taking profits before these, just just a little bit before these at certain milestones before these uh, targets hit. I will not tell you exactly what those targets are. Uh, <clears throat> on YouTube because that wouldn't be healthy for you or for me. And please, all this, make your own calculations. Use your own brain to think about this um, and get uh, information from sources other than me as well. Um, all right. Uh, Army of Fortune, I do believe they are one of the better, um, better companies out there. They know how to hire good people. They know the crypto market like the back of their hand, as far as being able to time hype. Um, the uh, And um, they know how to make quality games. Uh, this, you know, it's, 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 it's got really nice features to it, but it's, it, it's just their test game. And it's, you know, not groundbreaking, but their next game is a whole new genre that nobody has tried before. So there is significant risk in that uh, it's a new genre nobody's tried before. But uh, I am super excited. And compared with this, this is a lot of fun. I have fun with this on a daily basis. It was getting a little old without the electrician. Um, but uh, considering I had a lot of fun with this, I'm, um, I'm confident that their other game that's, that's more uh, in-depth will... Um, and I know certain things about it that I'm going to have a lot of fun playing that. So they're all going to use AFC and AFG. Um, the CEO um, brought 200 million players in China to Supercell to uh, Clash of Clans back in 2012. Uh, so he knows how to market. He knows how to market really, really well in a market that a lot of Western companies aren't as good at. Uh, reaching into um so uh my opinion this is going to be one of the better projects they're opening a software development kit for developers obviously uh hopefully later in the year so that they can um develop content for it they uh they already have over four million with a m uh, followers on TikTok for their IP, uh, Blick the Gobbler and Frog Pikeman, uh, and their uh, X account is growing as well. Um, they're doing other socials now, but they have X, um, not X the platform, but former uh, TikTok employees on payroll, and that's how they were able to garner the attention they have, and they're transferring those to transforming those to players we did at one point have uh i think 500,000 downloads or 500,000 users or downloads anyway sorry the uh, which number is there uh evades me right now okay uh they know how to get the player base now the one the one thing that they didn't do well over the last month and a half was uh was player retention uh, because at this current time there's no way to buy the best units in the game and so players would just quit when they didn't have the best, best units like the electrician or the healer I still have trouble with the healer I'm still I'm still working on the healer because I don't have the healer I have uh, now since I won a contest I have the others but um, so that's been a huge source of player frustration 
that and the leaderboard. Um, well, it's been a source of frustration for uh, one person in particular. The leaderboard has not been. Um, uh, uh, you, there's been ways to game the system uh, to 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 have easier write up on the leaderboard. So that's really annoyed the top player. But um, yeah, so just just some just some headaches that uh, that I I think they have reasons why they haven't addressed it. I think they're saving up most of their tech for the big drop, and maybe fixing some of these in the meantime would cause problems for their big drop of content. Um, but that is the one one concern that is floating around right now is do they really know how to do player retention? So. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, I am super duper bullish on this. What market cap do I think this can reach in this bull run? Uh, given everything I've said and, and just the base case uh, for all this, um, uh, my goal for this is between um, probably four to twelve billion dollars, maybe a little bit more. It is my favorite one. Um, it maybe even 20 billion if things go really well for them uh and they're able to develop uh a whole metaverse of games in an interoperable way that uh that games actually help each other other than just AFC and AFG um and the demigods will be able to go to different uh places so that'll be good so Interoperable assets is going to be a thing in their games, but um, but if like, uh, well, yeah, I have some ideas behind making truly interoperable games where gameplay directly affects other, uh, you know, uh, other parts of uh, other of the games, uh, which could be really cool in the future. So if they if they pull off some really cool things, if Army of Fortune is uh, ground gr groundbreaking game the same way Clash of Clans was, and they get half the world's population playing it. It could even be more than twenty billion uh, market cap. So that is my um, that is my honest assessment. Uh, let me know I'm crazy in the comments below. Thank you for watching this far. I appreciate your time. I am honored if. Uh, if you made it this far, I'm truly, truly honored you're here. Reach out to me, and uh, and let's talk. Uh, I've got a clan on Discord, uh, a knightly order. Uh, you don't have to be a knight to be there. You can be a recruit. But, uh, yeah, uh, investors and gamers and both there and some of my friends. So reach out to me. At my X is in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, it was, it was a bit of work putting this together, but it was also so much fun and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Freelander out.